In this video, we're gonna start putting the finishing touches to the Fiat 500 Twin Air. So one of the main things, as you would have seen, is I need to get this bodywork sorted out on the front bumper here. Now, in the last video, you saw us repair this bumper and then right at the very end, when we put on this clear coat, it started going all orange peely. And I was kind of a bit bummed out by that, to be honest with you. And the reason is, is because I didn't really know that clear coat actually does orange peel the way it did so we were reading through everyone's comments and you know again thank you so much for all of your help and advice on this when we were reading through the comments we didn't realize just quite how close we were so you know we've got quite a lot of comments saying oh that's actually really good repair on the bumper you know you were just this 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 close to getting it all sorted like just do a couple of extra steps i thought that was it you know i was gonna have to sand it all back do it again or just buy a new bumper or something so that was cool it's just you know we were lack of lack of experience. We didn't, we didn't really know how far to push this. So after I went through everyone's comments, there appears to be a general consensus. The main problem is, is that I didn't put enough on. So I put kind of like a really light dusting one, one, it wasn't really a dust, it, it was a coat. I put one light coat of this 2K clear coat on. And then more often than not, it will orange peel. But what you then do is basically just wet sand it back everyone was saying you need you need 1500 grit uh, and 2000 grit sandpaper which i've gone out and purchased and then just doing that just wet sanding it back you're gonna just wet sand the orange peel off ever so gently but you do it nice and evenly and then you blend it you kind of wet sand into the existing paint to blend it all together and then once you've wet sanded off the orange peel with the 2000 grit basically all you have to do then is just polish it up so i've got some compound i've got some uh Meguiar's compound so i'm just going to compound it after i do that and then polish it and that should should fingers crossed be all I need to do on this. So I've got a brand new can of 2K clear coat. These things only last for 48 hours once you've activated this. I think it's the hardener, is it? Um, and it's been longer than 48 hours since I last did this. So I had to buy another one of these and they're not the cheapest things. I think it's about 24 pounds for one of these cans, which is uh, quite steep. Okay, so in the end I did two much thicker coats and then the third one was kind of a, a lighter coat to match the lighter coat that i did for the first one to kind of try and end up with about three coats of clear coat and i've got to say you know even just from spraying on the extra layers it already looks a little bit smoother um so i've let this dry now for a good few hours i've been away done some other things what I'm going to do now then, I think really, is just just wet sand this whole thing down, see if any of this orange peel comes out. Right, it's not amazing still. <laughs> it's not, it's not amazing. It's, it's still quite matte. It's, I mean, the actual finish is better. It's less orange peely for sure, but it's still quite matte. So I think I probably could have just polished it for even longer. I just don't have the patience. <laughs> to be quite honest with you, I don't, I don't have it in me. I probably should, I should probably cultivate this kind of patience and, and I should certainly try and cultivate the skill if I'm going to do all this because being able to do your own body work would save you a hell of a lot of money. I am going to learn how to do all this properly but for now this is all it's kind of having. <laughs> and you know what, you know what though, I think I, think I might just get into rat rods <laughs> for obvious reasons. I think rat rods are where it's at. <laughs> What I have done though is I've buttoned up all of the suspension, all the tie rods are back on, the pinch bolts back in for the shocks. That's all good. All I need to do is put the under tray back on underneath and then I'm gonna take it down off of its axle stands and we'll take this for a test drive. Right, well it's time to take Tina for a spin. So this is the 
maiden voyage, if you like, for this replacement engine in this car at least. You know, I'm not gonna stress test it to the nth degree, you know, like I'm gonna do the Paris Dakar rally or anything. I'm just gonna go out for a regular kind of drive. I'll give it a little bit of throttle, uh, you know, when I can. Um, and I'm just gonna try and stay kind of like <laughs> within a mile, I think, of where I live, just in case. Um, it was suggested to me that when I go out, I should probably take some oil and some coolant in case it needs topping up, but I don't have any left, so I'm just going out dry. What I do have, though, is the uh, RAC breakdown number saved in my phone, so that could be quite handy. All right, so she starts just straight away on the key there. Let's just get going. Have I done all the wheel nuts up? Yes, I think I have. <laughs> oh, so, oh, don't forget, I fitted a new clutch as well, so... Oh God, new brakes, new clutch, everything feels odd. Okay, so one thing I definitely need to do is I need to get the, the wheel alignment done because something's come way out of whack. I know it was a little bit out to begin with, but look at that. <laughs> it's going straight. We'll get that sorted. That was me messing around with the uh, tie rods at one point off camera. She feels good though. She feels like a perky little twin air Fiat 500 that I remember. I've got to be honest, I do really, really, really like these cars. I know you probably think that's a little bit strange. Like I am into performance cars. I am into, you know, cool cars, but these Fiat 500s, they're absolutely fantastic. For being in the city or in or in town, they're just they're just brilliant. They just they just work. They're great, they're small, they're nimble. This twin air engine is fantastic. <laughs> it's rev hungry, it's perky, it's pokey, it's all the P's. And it's got loads of low down torque as well because of the turbo. So, you know, unlike when you drive, if you've ever driven a 1.2 litre version of one of these Fiat 500s, they're so unbelievably gutless. These twin airs, I know they're 875cc, but they've got way more get up and go than a 1.2. And so, it, you know, and you can really notice it, just things like coming out of junctions and on roundabouts and things like that. No, you're not gonna be, you know, doing loads of mad overtaking in it. It's not like that, but it, you know, just as a, as a daily driver, just driving around town, it's absolutely fantastic for it. Just give her a little bit of acceleration now. Yeah, cracking. Oh, the brakes need bedding in a bit. <laughs> Clutch is lovely. Everything is A-OK -okay, it seems. She's right up to temperature now. I've been driving around for about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. I'm gonna have to take her home, pop the bonnet in, you know, check coolant, check oil, but so far, so good. Okay, so we're back home now and nothing is leaking. I can't see anything. There's nothing untoward. The coolant is still at the right level. I checked the oil a second ago. We're right smack bang in the middle, so that's great. Uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. I'm not gonna lie to you. If there was anything a, a little bit, uh, is the fact that the exhaust is definitely noisier than the old one that just came off. So I am wondering if maybe, where well, I've connected the flexi from the exhaust into the bottom of the cat. I am wondering if, if that's kind of clamped down and, and sealed enough. Trouble is, is that I just can't, there's not enough room for me to get in there. And I mean, you, you saw in the other videos me changing this exhaust. I didn't quite get, uh, so I think what I'm gonna do, this car is gonna go for an MOT because even though it's got, I think it's got like six months left on the MOT, after all this work, I just want to give it a nice clean bill of health. But I think when I take it to get MOT'd, I'm going to get the garage to do the wheel alignment uh, and I'm going to get them to check that exhaust. And then if it looks like it's, you know, maybe not sealed up properly, um, you know, on the join where they're clamped together, I'm going to see if I can get them to just, you know, maybe nick it up a bit or, or, or just sort it out for me because I just, I can't get under there. So, but other than that, I'm, dead chuffed with this, I'm dead chuffed. Oh, you know what, actually, here's a lovely little finishing touch as well. I bought these new hubcaps, because as Naomi keeps stressing to me, 
This car is a car that needs to look pretty for the next owner. If you think about the kind of people who own the Fiat 500s, it needs to look pretty. So she insisted we got some new hubcaps. There we go. They're not OEM, but they're close enough. <laughs> they're only 14 pounds for four on the Evil Bay. So that will look good when I've got them on all corners. Okay, that's Tina having an MOT. As I was driving here, the exhaust started blowing. You could just hear it. It's that center section, the flexi, where I've put the new, the new exhaust into the cat. And as I drove it up here, it was getting worse and worse and worse. It was just blowing, basically. Um, and kind of as the guy just pulled it in now, he said, you know, it's just going to fail straight away on that exhaust, don't you? So I've just said, yeah, like, <laughs> I know it's going to fail. Like, can we do the test anyway, just to pick up any errors that, you know, I might have introduced by doing all of this work. Right, so back from the MOT test, and yeah, like I just said a second ago, so it did fail, but the only thing it failed on was that exhaust, the exhaust leak. So the technical terms here are, exhaust has a major leak of exhaust gases. So, like, that's pretty good. So mechanically, this car is sound <laughs> what he didn't do of course because the exhaust has got a leak he didn't do an emissions test he was telling me it's just a whole separate a whole separate test so that could still flag other things um you know that are wrong with this engine potentially it's a new engine isn't it so there could be all manner of things that are wrong on it that could make it fail an emissions test so but i think mechanically um this car's great <laughs> it's got, it, that was the only that, that was the only uh that was the only thing on the on the whole test he did make it to the end of the test as well so i'm pretty pleased with that actually you know i know i keep doing these videos where cars fail mot's and i'm like yeah i'm pretty pleased but <laughs> Right, well that was a bit of a result. So I just took the car to uh, one of those ATS uh, Automaster places. Is that right? ATS Automaster? I think that's it. Uh, just to get the tracking done on the car, uh, which they did. Uh, and also they do exhaust there, don't they? And obviously the first thing they said when they put it up on the ramp, they were like, you do realize this exhaust is blowing like crazy. I said, yeah, I said, I don't suppose you can help with that, can you? Uh, and they said, yeah, I think we probably could, to be honest, bear with us. Uh, and they did. <laughs> it only cost me £40. Basically, what it turns out is the exhaust is too short. And so you have to pull the exhaust all the way forward to get it onto the bottom of the cat. And it's just, it's about three inches too short, this exhaust that I bought. I mean, obviously, I bought the cheapest exhaust on the internet. So you kind of get what you pay for. <laughs> so the, the car's here with me now, back down on the ground. So... I can't actually get under there any decent to actually show you and it's under the plastic fairing underneath but they've basically got like a like a, a pipe joiner imagine like a sleeve you fit one end in there and then the other end in there and it just grips two ends of the pipes so it's kind of like so it's, it's extended it that kind of three inches that it needed i think they wrapped it with a bit of bandage and stuff and so basically the exhaust is now properly sealed and so when you can't turn the car on and you drive it it drives completely normal. It's not, it doesn't sound like a two cylinder rally car. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and they only charged me £40, pounds, um, which I thought was very, very reasonable. Um, so, yeah, shout out to those guys. So, that's pretty good. So, I can just book this in now for uh, an MOT. And hopefully, if it passes the emissions, that is going to be a car with a complete clean bill of health, just like the Mini. All right, so let's just have a quick. Uh, bodywork update you know the trouble with bodywork is is that it only has to be slightly off and you can just notice it like bodywork kind of almost has to be perfect especially when you're doing such a lot like, a large panel you know doing like the whole bump like we were doing doing a whole door it has to be way better than kind of average so what we're doing we're putting a pin in it we're we've stopped we're stopping any bodywork stuff you know if i had a garage it'd be a little bit it'd be a little bit different you had to go in there settle everything down it wouldn't be too bad it wouldn't be any wind uh, but i don't so we've decided that you know just for the time being we're gonna we're gonna send uh, these cars to the body shop to get done but absolutely 100% want to be able to do bodywork in the future. It's definitely something I now want to do, uh, whereas I didn't before, just because I see the value of doing it. And 
yeah i've even been looking at you know maybe doing a course i've seen that there's quite a few three five day courses that you can actually attend um it teaches you how to do this stuff you know aimed at the kind of enthusiast the hobbyist so i'll be even thinking about doing something like that but for now this setup it's just not quite there it's not going to quite do it so that means i still need to get this door fixed I need to get this bumper seen by someone who knows what they're doing that keeps popping out which isn't good but really you're not going to see much more of tina after this point i will update you when the bodywork's finished and i'll update you you know with the results of the mot now i can't tell you what the next project is right now all i'm going to tell you is that i have it some of you already have seen from a youtube post i made that is a 1993 car so we're going more retro we're going older uh, and for a couple of reasons really one i love 90s cars you know i'm a child of the 90s so a lot of these cars were around when i was a kid and you know they're just great secondly i think they might be slightly easier to actually work on they're a bit simpler so you know this car this has been a bit of a nightmare really i've, I've said it before you know things like documentation and uh, all the electronics and these things they worry me a lot but i'm hoping with the car that i've bought it's going to be a little bit easier now what there is actually is there is loads of documentation for this car out there lots of part diagrams um wiring diagrams lots and lots of enthusiast posts on forums obviously because you know it's been around since 1993 so anything that's gone wrong with these cars someone's probably posted about it in a forum i'll give you one more clue Sh should i i'll give you one more little clue it's a coupe it's a coupe from 1993 you will see it on the channel next week that's all i'm saying so if you want to keep updated with that project if you want to see when i drop that video you're going to have to hit subscribe which is like just down here you just go whoosh, whoosh. It takes one second just to hit subscribe do it for me that would be a massive support and uh, i hope you like the car i hope you like it i'm excited to work on it it's a car i've actually wanted to own for a long time so yeah, so that is what is going to be in the next video, which is where I'll see you.